one big thing that I usually cover here on my channel is um, interoperability. Um, I'm a big proponent also of, of Cosmos. I don't know if you have really kind of like deeply, um, I don't know, worked with them or looked into that, um, the Tendermint algorithm, and those kind of things. Um, so from an interoperability standpoint, how, I guess, hard is it to connect Hashgraph with other consensuses like, for example, Tendermint? Um, and do you also plan to build trustless decentralized bridges like IBC, um, the Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol from, from Cosmos? Um, and and what's the roadmap and the time, time plan here? Oh, yeah, this is critically important. Absolutely. And there's a whole bunch of people building on us to do these exact things. So you have people like Alliance Block who are building the Alliance Bridge, which are bridges between ledgers. And they're also bridges between DeFi, decentralized finance, and traditional finance. So they are bridging, they're not only bridging between ledgers, DeFi to DeFi, they're even doing DeFi to traditional Fi. Um, so that's that's one group doing something. LimeChain built an EVM bridge validator uh, on Hedera, which allows it to um, connect to other ledgers. Chainlink, everybody knows Chainlink. They are the ones who do oracles. Everybody knows about them. They're actually one of our council members. And they, of course, are doing their oracle integration into Hedera. Um, not surprising, they're a council member. And, and so that allows us to connect to others. And of course, an Oracle lets you connect to the real world, even the stock market or the weather or whatever, but it also lets you connect to other ledgers. Uh, the Oracle can tell you what's happened on another ledger and you can then do atomic swaps and all sorts of fun things. Um, in addition to that, I'm aware of a number of other projects that are being built uh, on Hedera to bridge them to other things. Or I should say they're, they're bridge projects that are including Hedera as one of the many ledgers they want to bridge between, which I think is critical. You ask, what does the world look like in a hundred years? Yeah, the world looks like a bunch of ledgers clearly bridged together and interoperable. Um, and this isn't 100 years away. You know, this is now. This is what's happening now. And it's critically important. Again, I think 2021 is a pretty good year. I think, I think the future is going to look back at 2021 as having been a pretty good year. Um, and then we, we allow more things than that. So we have, um, we have solidity contracts. You know, we run EVM. And... We allow atomic swaps. You know, you can have a contract that does atomic swaps just using secrets that are revealed on one as you lock up on one. It gives you a secret, you lock it up on the other, and so on. Uh, and we even added support for EVM commands like, tell me the timestamp on the current block. They don't even make any sense because we don't have blocks. But we implemented that command. We give you the timestamp on the current transaction, which is a consensus transaction and a consensus timestamp. And the reason we did it is so you could do atomic swaps. So we even from the very beginning, even before we wrote the software, we were planning to make bridging easier in that way. Um, there's other things we do too that are not exactly bridges, that are useful, building blocks. Like we have scheduled transactions, which is an interesting thing. It allows you to get a bunch of people to jointly sign a transaction, but it does the work for you of collecting the signatures. Mm -hmm. So one person puts this transaction on Hedera with only his own signature, and then each of the other participants can then go to Hedera and submit a transaction that adds a signature to it. And when it has enough signatures, then it executes. And so this is an interesting thing. As we get to the world that's more complicated, where you want to have multi-sig and even multi-layer multi-sig, where I want two out of three organizations to sign off. And within an organization, it has to be five out of the 10 people. If you want really complicated things, collecting signatures becomes complicated. And so with scheduled transactions, we make that easier and it helps bridge between the people that are signing. Um, so just all sorts of, things. even, <laughs> I know I'm going beyond what we said, even if we're talking about atomic swaps and things within a single ledger, we allow you to say, have Alice give some of her X coins to, what, to Bob, while Bob is giving some of his Y coins to Carol, while Carol is giving some of her Z coins to Alice a three-way swap of three different people involving three different cryptocurrencies, maybe completely unrelated to each other, minted by different organizations and different people, and it's atomic. It's a single transaction. It's our cryptocurrency transfer as a single transaction, and that single transaction can have 10 people that are, are moving around things in 10 different cryptocurrencies, and it's atomic. It will either all the coins move or none of them. And so we're even building bridges within ourselves in ways that, well, every ledger could do that with smart contracts, but we do it at the native layer. So you can do this at 10,000 transactions a second and a tenth of a cent per transaction. 
anyway, that's a long answer to your question. No, that's great. And I love it. And I think definitely interoperability is the next big thing because we need to bridge and connect all these, all these networks, right? And they're accruing billions in value. So you see all these chains, Solana, Ethereum, Avalanche, Cosmos, Polkadot, right? They're all coming to life now as we see this kind of emergence of, of DLTs and um, also strong product market fit. I mean, many of the DEXs have, I think, um, Midamas, they just released that they have uh, 10 million or 5 million active users a month. Like, that's crazy, right? So I think there's definitely strong product market fit. Um, and as we talk a little bit about these things, um, you already uh, mentioned a little bit that um, there's a lot of um, bridges that also kind of like will bring in or you know connect the, the DeFi worlds and the, also CeFi and, and TradFi worlds. Um, so what are some of the, there's so many, but what are some of the highlights? What are some of the best, most exciting use cases, um, products that are currently being built on Hedera that you are um, really, really um, excited to, to see and, and to have? Oh, I am really excited. So yes, there's DeFi stuff. In fact, the HBAR Foundation has one of their big thrusts is to fund DeFi projects. I'm, um, they have announced that. Uh, we, are, we are seeing people using Hedera for a wide range of things. So starting with what you're talking about, people are doing things like NFTs, right? NFTs are a big thing. There's a lot of people doing it. You have people like Galaxy, which isn't just minting some NFTs. They are an organization that helps other people to build NFTs and to monetize their own, their own fame, their own time, their own all sorts of weird things. So um, Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, NBA player, started Galaxy to do this, and he does it himself. He tokenized NFTs, his own future income. That's cool. And he did other things you wouldn't even think of. He tokenizes the shoes he wears and even allows them people with the tokens to be voting on what shoes he will wear at the next game. Crazy. I mean, it's just really cool. And this is allowing the world to buy and sell and to get things that they wanted that didn't exist before. There's a pent up demand that people didn't even know they had because of tokenization. So I'm probably preaching in the choir. NFTs are wonderful. I think everyone knows that. But it's just really, they're wonderful. <laughs> it really is true. So we have Galaxy doing that. We have the Toco project from DLA Piper. They're one of our council members, uh, tokenizing things like fine art and expensive things. So we will see tokens in the future for expensive buildings and wine and fine art. And we'll see um, tokens for little cheap things, you know, trading card like things. And um, you could have a museum that tokenizes each insect in the museum. You know, you can imagine that kind of thing. We're gonna see that. We're seeing people tokenize art in ways that blow my mind. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see that coming. Um, I'm sorry, not like paintings, but just digital art selling for amazing amounts. Um, speaking of tokens, we have an auction going on right now at Hedera. And we wrote software to do it. We're giving that out open source. Uh, but right now there's an auction going on for some of those art tokens and also for some metal coins and things. So NFTs, tokens, these are cool. Then we're seeing markets around these tokens. And so we're seeing people do things like tokenize energy so that you could have an energy market tokenizing carbon credits, carbon offsets. So you can have a carbon offset market and then taking the tokens and combining them, which is an amazing idea. So the idea is that you put a solar panel on your house, you could actually sell your energy, not just to the power company for whatever they decide to pay you, but to other users directly in a market. You might make more selling to an actual market than a monopoly controlling your price. And in that market, you can end up bundling carbon credits with the kilowatt hours. And so somebody is buying this many kilowatt hours and this many tons of CO2 at the same time from you. And people are doing this. People are building this on top of us, um, systems to do this. And I love this. Uh, you know, we're very green. We use less energy per transaction than anybody else. And we're carbon neutral, actually carbon negative because we buy carbon offsets ourselves. For that little bit of electricity we use, we offset it. But the really exciting thing too, is that people are building markets on top of us for carbon offsets. So that's cool. Then you have the fact that we record things immutably. It has nothing to do with tokens. Of course, we have this immutable eternal record of what goes on and we're incredibly cheap. Again, it's a 10th of a cent in order to send a message that will be recorded forever. Who's using that? We have someone building on top of us to track COVID vaccines. 
As the COVID vaccine goes from place to place along the, along the route, there are thermometers inside the freezers that, that hold it that are reporting to the chain, to us, to our consensus service, what the temperature was at every step along the way. And so you end up with being able to prove to the consumer, the shot I'm giving, getting right now is coming from a vial that truly was cold at every step along its journey. And I have the records to show that. We have people doing this for things like organic food and for um, ethically sourced things. Like that diamond you're buying, is it a blood diamond? Did people die for that? Or is it an innocent, um, good diamond? That kind of thing. People are building these sorts of things. So you have this provenance, you have these proofs. And that also allows you to stop fraud. Mm. So <laughs> let's talk about two industries that are actually famous for being unusually bad industries for fraud, where fraud is famous for being a, a real problem. There is the advertising industry. Um, everybody says it is just rife with fraud. And so you have ad stacks stamping out fraud using us. And the way they're doing it is they are the middleman between the website that shows your ad and the advertiser that is buying that ad that says, I want you to show an ad for me. And it just turns out that in the world right now, there is enormous fraud where a website will sit, show some ads to users and then tell every advertiser, oh, I showed your ad. Well, they didn't show all their ads. They showed one at a given moment in time, but they tell everybody, oh yeah, at that moment in time, I was showing your ad and they get money from everybody, although they only showed one ad, just outright lying. What AdStacks has done is made that physically impossible. All of these events of, of impressions of people seeing the, trend, the um, ads are being recorded in Hedera by sending it through our, our consensus system. It's extremely fast. They could do 10,000 a second. They can get a consensus in just a few seconds. And it's a tenth of a cent each time. Very cheap. But what it does is it allows those buying ads and those showing ads to know that they're not lying to each other in certain ways. And this is very powerful. Um, I'm sure the world still has fraud, but this eliminates whole classes of fraud, which is important.